Hello there and welcome back to my channel Rover Turbo. In this video we've got something special in the background as you can see. It's basically a Rover 220 GSI Turbo. So today it's a customer's car of mine with doing a diagnostic session on it. So it's in total standard form basically. So it's got a few running issues. So we're just going to have a quick look around it and then see what we can do. So it's a 1994 220 GSI turbo it's in really good condition it's the first time i've seen one of these in a long time actually so everything's pretty much standard under here uh apart from a um what i build dump valve everything else looks pretty much standard so having a few running issues with the idle uh, cutting out when it's hot um and the emissions are a bit tight um there's sort of a bit all over the place it was sort of very very close on the mot so we're gonna we've got the the t4 diagnostics basically here now i've got all of the cables and all of the discs for all of these rovers so this is these have got the special plugs in them that connect into the diagnostic socket which is basically here on the ecu um so this is the mems ecu it's probably a 550 yeah so it's a, it's a 550. This is what they basically use on these. So this is the diagnostic socket. So that's what it plugs into. So I just thought I'd do a little video uh, just showing exactly how we connect up the diagnostics to these and just go through the diagnostic process and uh, see if we can find any issues and obviously sort out any idle problems and test the lambda sensor and stuff like that. Right, so we've got everything plugged in, it's connected basically to the diagnostic port, and then it's got a battery power that you need to connect it to. So that's now connected to the laptop. So this is basically the diagnostic system. So you have to put in the correct disc, because there's loads of different discs for the different cars. So this particular one is this one here, which is for the the old Rover car, so the T16s, the old pre-2000s, uh, I think it is. You need to choose what Rover we've got. So Rover 200, all derivatives. Don't need the VIN. Make sure I've actually connected the right car in here. So now it asks us basically what we're connecting to. So we want MEMS 1.6 T-Series. And then obviously we've got MEMS 1.9K security and other things like that. So we're gonna select MEMS 1.6 T-Series. So powertrain diagnostics selected, step by step, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it's telling us what cables we need. The vehicle is fitted with an ECM for the Rover 200 2 litre 16 valve turbo. If passed the correct ECM yet, so that is correct. So it's asking us here what's fitted. Knock sensor, air conditioning, that kind of thing, which is sort of not really relevant. So now at this point it's asking us how much miles has the engine got on it. So um, we're going to say greater than, so greater than 500 miles. It's basically all this is doing is asking us whether it's running in. So it, the, the diagnostic needs to know if the engine's running in because it has, it, there's more, you know, the data's different depending on whether it's a running engine or not. Okay. So let's go fault flags first. This is basically checking for, um, codes so it's failed on the coolant temperature sensor circuit but that could have been because it's been unplugged um, or it's failed in the past or whatever and the cam sensor circuit uh, again the same reason so okay so I've just cleared all of those codes and it's just done another retest and it's passed on everything so Sometimes if you unplug a sensor, it will throw a flag up and that flag will always stay. Even oh, it stays there too clear. Yeah, basically, yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually um, adjust the, the actual correct position for the throttle cable. Uh, a lot of 
problems with these is the fact that the throttle cable isn't actually adjusted correctly and people adjust the actual idle on the cable and what can happen is, is when the cable heats up when the engine bay heats up it can actually pull the throttle open slightly which confuses the stepper motor it confuses the ecu and everything so the procedure the correct rover procedure to adjust the throttle cable is you pull this out wind this bit of plastic all the way down the cable and the idea is that this piece of plastic needs to be sitting with no gap between there and there so basically like that so as you can see if I'll put, just put a little bit of tension on this cable you can see there's a little bit of a gap there so we don't want that gap and then literally we just want to butt that up against there and that's it so that's the actual and that's done that's done simple as that simple as that so we've got two sets of adjustment on this we've got the adjustment we've got a course adjustment down here which is this throttle stop here this doesn't adjust the, the, the idle that's just supposed to be set and left alone and then we've got a fine adjustment on this little screw here so this is a stepper motor which actually controls the idle on these through the ECU. And then it's got a throttle position sensor here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of adjusting the idle first because that's one of the problems that the customer's having. Right, so this is a stepper motor test. So basically we need to warm the engine up to 88 degrees before it can actually test to see whether the idle, the stepper motor is actually working correctly. So we'll let this warm up and then we'll cut back in when it's finished. So we've just done a test on the stepper motor. You have to get the, 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 um, the temperature up to 88 degrees. It goes through a test process where it actually communicates with the car. The idle goes up and down a little bit. So basically it's saying that the test shows that the stepper motor and the ECM are functioning correctly, but the stepper position is too high. Okay, this condition typically gives symptoms such as cutting out or stalling during idle or overrun. So the fault is normally corrected by a simple adjustment, but may occasionally be also indicate one of the following faults, okay, which you've got here, which are basically engine faults. So, so if any of the above problems are suspected, press map test. So we're going to do a map test, and it will test the functioning of the actual map sensor, and it will tell us whether it thinks whether the map sensor is actually functioning correctly. Rapidly open and close the throttle, ensuring, ensuring full throttle. The engine speed must must exceed 3,500 RPM. Full throttle was failed to be achieved. Ensure, ensure that when the answer the throttle is fully depressed and then released. Retest to test the manifold pressure sensor. The idle, the idle manifold pressure was, was measured as being 31 kPa, lower limit is 32, upper limit is 40 kPa. Let's continue to accept the fault. Okay, so that, that's vacuum. So we'll retest. Right, so what we're gonna do is do an oxygen sensor test. So basically, we'll click on that. Let's check an oxygen sensor and closed loop uh, fueling feedback, please wait. Okay, so it says the oxygen sensor has failed to switch during the test. Possible causes connect problem shown below. So oxygen sensor is disconnected. The harness open circuit or the oxygen sensor itself. Now this is the original oxygen sensor that's on this car. So it's probably actually that that's actually failed. So we've done a MAC test and it, it, it didn't pass that necessarily. So press adjust stepper to readjust the stepper position. So we'll adjust the stepper. Set the step position by adjusting by the air bypass screw. So we need to find, we need to get an Allen key for that little uh, adjustment screw. And then we'll see if we can get this in that range. Which is basically this little screw. Right, so I've been adjusting that idle screw but basically it's failed to do anything at all so it's saying that the problem with this insufficient adjustment range on the bypass I know you can't see this on the bypass screw then the bypass to, so you've got to adjust the bypass screw to the center of its range retest and repeat and then we might have to do a course adjustment so it's having trouble adjusting the 
fine air adjustment or the fine adjustment on there. So what you have to do is basically set the, the little screw to its mid position. And then you have to do the same test again, but this time adjust the actual throttle stop. Varies on these cars, but it's either six or seven mil. On the bottom under there, you've got a little stop, a little metal stop. And that can be adjusted up or down. So they're asking to you to adjust that up or down to get it in the range that it close to the range it needs to be and then adjust it with the fine adjustment but what you can do is to do a throttle reset which will do anyway so basically it's ignition on full throttle five times and then you'll hear the actual stepper motor actually making the clicking resetting noise so ignition on that's reset the stepper so what we need to do is we need to start the engine back up again and then adjust that throttle stop to get that range exactly where we need it to be right so we've gone through the process of trying to adjust the stepper motor but it wouldn't actually adjust through the computer so i've just literally done it manually after we set the throttle cable adjusted to so it's idling a lot better now and when you rev it up it comes back down it doesn't want to stall so much so we've had a look at that the lambda sensor we've got another lambda sensor out of a, another turbo that we had, we plugged it in, um, but it hasn't been making a difference. So the oxygen sensor here is at 0.44, but it's not moving. Um, and I believe it's not actually showing us, yeah, loop status is off. So it's, it's enclosed, it's in open loop basically, because it's not sensing the voltage on the lambda sensor. So we've plugged in another lambda sensor, try heating it up. Um, to try and get a bit of oxygen to protect it, it's not making any difference. I've got a spare lambda sensor that I've plugged in and it's not making any difference either. So it looks like there's actually a problem with the wiring or the plug. So we'll have a quick look at that and see if we can actually just tweak the pins in the plug and see whether that will make any difference. Right, so we've done a little bit more investigation into the lambda sensor. So we've got just unplugged it there because we don't seem to be getting any readings from anything at all and we've tweaked the, the wires in the plug so literally by connecting one wire to a multimeter that's gone lean that's showing a voltage of 0.07 which is now lean so it looks like the lambda sensor is actually reading the voltage. So it's just the actual wiring on the car. Pretty much done everything we can do with this now. We've hopefully eliminated the idle issue by adjusting the throttle cable. We've had a look at the, the lambda and I've confirmed, we've confirmed the actual, this lambda here is replacement lambda is getting voltages when you heat it. And this lambda in here is actually producing voltages um, when the engine's running. So that lambda is doing something. It's just us obviously not the ECU isn't reading, isn't reading the numbers. So this needs to be, we need someone needs to do a bit more of investigation into the cable and the plug on the back of the ECU, back probing, multimeter stuff, which is haven't got time for today. So that's basically it. So that's a bit of a an in-depth view into T4. Um, there's a few other things you can do, reset adaptions, which basically resets the issue back to factory defaults. You usually do that kind of thing when it goes, when the engine's been replaced or the engine's in a MGZR or a completely different car. You can adjust the idle and a few other immobilizations and stuff like that you can do with it. So yeah, it's quite a powerful piece of kit. Um, it comes in handy. Uh, this also does uh, a different software on this. I can actually do the Land Rovers as well, the L L322s I can do petrol and the diesel um also the p38s as well suspension calibrations stuff like that as well so all right so there you go so i hope you enjoyed that video um a little bit of an in-depth in how to do the t4 diagnostics and this lovely car here so it's a really nice condition it's a really nice car so um yeah i hope you enjoyed the video if you do hit the like button and i'll see you soon